Hi, I'm Jo Heinrich and I'd like to read an excerpt from Lies About My Mother by Daniela Drescher. It's a book that's strangely dark and uncomfortable and light-hearted all rolled into one. It's narrated by a child growing up in the early 1980s in a deeply dysfunctional family in rural Germany. Her father is convinced everything in his life would be better if her mother weighed less. We would be spending the holidays with the Elsners, a couple from Garmisch Partenkirch, and their children. My parents knew them from Munich, where we'd lived for a while. We were due to meet at a motorway service area just before the Italian border, and then cross the Brenner Pass together, my father announced, not without a certain reverence in his voice. I couldn't help but marvel all the way there. The Alps, speckled with snow, rose up in the distance. I'd only ever seen the mountains in pictures in our photo album. I was amazed at how massive and imposing they were in real life. When we arrived at the car park, I initially kept my distance. I couldn't remember the family. Isolde, the mother, was so small and thin she could have fitted in my little polyester tracksuit bottoms. She hugged both my parents affectionately, as did the man, whose name was Gerd. My father was visibly pleased. My mother's reaction seemed a little cautious to me. Both daughters were close to my age, the elder ten, the younger five. Their names were Tekla and Moni. Tekla, the elder sister, chewed gum incessantly and listened to music on her Walkman, which she casually tucked into the waistband of her jeans. As she walked towards me, I looked up at her in awe. She smelt faintly of perfume and seemed incredibly grown up all round. The younger daughter, Moni, didn't seem to notice anything besides herself. She was a slightly fatter child who demanded food incessantly, much to my father's horror. At lunch in the service station, she devoured a plate of spaghetti in no time at all. When her parents got up to pay, my father bent over the table and looked over the empty plate at Moni with excessive concern. You must eat more slowly. Make sure your fork's less full and always chew well. Ten times every mouthful, at least. He made an effort to speak especially clearly without an accent. Then he turned and gave my mother one of his troubled looks, as if she was to blame for Moni's eating habits. We'd only just got back in the car when he snapped at my mother. Does your swimming costume still fit you? he asked tetchily. His words came out of the blue. What do you mean? Of course it fits. I understood at once. She couldn't compare to the competition. Her thighs were so much wider than skinny as old as, despite all the crisp bread. My father had just wanted to make a throwaway remark, and he would probably have left it at that one stupid comment, but now my mother was in a rage. I could feel quite clearly how much he'd hurt her. How thin am I supposed to get, in your opinion, she snapped, so vehemently, that I cowered deeper into my seat. My father was silent. Just tell me, she carried on. When there was no reply, she too retreated behind a grim silence. It's never enough, is it? No one spoke another word for the rest of the long journey. I tried to focus on my music cassette. My eyes were glued to the landscape but I also had the feeling that I had to concentrate on braking, steering and overtaking myself. The atmosphere in the car was so tense. Only once did my mother offer in a deadpan voice to take over the driving from my father, but he turned her down and carried on resolutely without a break. When we finally arrived at a place called Brindisi, we were all sweaty and tired. It was the middle of the day and the light was unusually bright and blinding. Luckily, my mother had bought me a pair of children's sunglasses, which I proudly put on. The hotel was right on the seafront and was called Banjo, just like the crispy chocolate bar I'd sometimes have from the petrol station. It was the very first time I'd be staying in a hotel. 
I was happy and very excited. The carpets and curtains were a bright apricot colour and smelt faintly of smoke. Not even the air freshener could mask it. My parents both wanted to have a lie down, but I jumped around on the big double bed and begged them to take me to see the sea. Eventually, my father gave in. My mother gritted her teeth and packed up the swimming things. We joined the Elsners on the beach. Tekla and Moni had also wanted to go to the sea for a swim straight away. At first, I just stood there in amazement for ages. My feet were planted in warm sand. There was no wind at all and the sun was still high in the sky. Never before had I seen so much blue at once. The sky and the sea. My father and Gert hired parasols and loungers from a very tanned man in lemon yellow shorts who was asking a fortune for them, but it was the holidays after the all. My parents were still only speaking to each other when they had to. The mood between them was getting worse by the minute. My father constantly fixated on my mother's body. She tried to ignore his glaring, but it was obvious how much it unnerved and upset her. I knew she'd really been looking forward to Italy, but now all her fun seemed to have been spoiled. Not even the shells I found for her could cheer her up. While I was kneeling in the sand, taking care not to break any of the delicate white shells between my fingers as I was picking them up, I also kept tentatively looking over at my parents. I simply didn't understand what was fat about my mother. There were women here on the beach who certainly weighed much more, and there were plenty of men carrying around their enormous bellies in front of them as a matter of course. Now my father was sitting with Gert and his older, he practically blossomed. He was exuberant around them, making joke after joke, laughing incessantly and slapping his thighs, even if something wasn't actually funny at all. But only until the men started discussing work. Gert, it turned out, had just been promoted, and the more enthusiastically he talked about it, the more my father's face darkened. I felt sorry for him. I knew how much he suffered from not being given a chance in his company. My mother sat separately on a blanket the whole time, a small book with a white linen cover on her knees. She didn't need a parasol. Her skin soaked up the sun and she looked particularly beautiful in her dark blue bikini. But she didn't seem to be enjoying her time on the beach. She didn't go into the water, but just sat there with her legs drawn up, reading page after page and hardly ever raising her head, her face half hidden behind her Grace Kelly sunglasses. Thank you.